Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at solving quadratic problems. We're going to start with example 1 and it says 5x squared minus 3x equals 4x squared plus 4x plus 18. And as you know, uh, when we're solving quadratic equations, we always need to start by making them equal to 0 on one side. So we're going to rearrange this to make it equal to 0. We'll start by subtracting 4x squared from both sides. And when we do that, we will get uh, 5x squared minus 4x squared, which is just x squared. Now we subtract 4x from both sides, and we'll get minus 7x on the left side. And then finally we subtract 18 from both sides, get x squared minus 7x minus 18, which is equal to 0. And so we've rearranged that quadratic to make it equal to 0. And all those steps there were really important when you're solving any quadratic equation, you make it equal to 0. Now, from uh, this point, we can solve it using the quadratic formula, or we can factorise. In this video, we're going to solve these quadratics by factorising, but sometimes you might want to use the quadratic formula instead. I will link both uh, the videos explaining quadratic formula and factorising quadratics in the description and at the top of the screen now. So if you haven't watched those videos yet and you're not sure how to factorise quadratics or using the quadratic formula, watch those before you continue. Okay, so we get x squared minus 7x minus 18 is equal to 0 and we're going to factorise it. We get x minus 9 times x plus 2 and that's equal to 0. And that is two things that multiply to make 0. And when you've got two things that multiply to make 0, you know that one of those things must be 0. So when two brackets multiply to make 0, one of the brackets must be equal to 0. So either x minus 9 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 is equal to 0. If we solve those two uh, equations, we add 9 to both sides, we get x equals 9. Or, we subtract 2 from both sides, we get x equals minus 2. And that is the final answer. Either x is equal to 9 or x is equal to minus 2. And we can finish there. Okay? Now, example 2, uh, we've got a trapezium here and the area of the trapezium is 72 centimetres squared. Question A says, show that x squared plus 3x minus 70 is equal to 0. Okay, well, I'm going to start by remembering the e formula for the area of a trapezium. a plus b divided by 2 times height, where a is the top, b is the bottom, and h is the height. So we're going to substitute the numbers in. Firstly, we're going to substitute that the area is 72. Then the top of the trapezium is x minus 1. The bottom of the trapezium is x plus 3. And the height of the trapezium is x plus 2. And uh, now we can simplify that. So x minus 1 times x plus 3 is just the same as 2x plus 2. And here with this fraction, 2x plus 2 divided by 2, well, I can divide everything by 2 and simplify it. So 2x plus 2 divided by 2 is just the same as x plus 1. And we get 72 is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 2. We can now expand those brackets. And we get x squared plus 3x plus 2. If you don't know how to expand double brackets, you need to watch my video on expanding brackets. I will link that at the top of the video now. Now, we subtract 72 from both sides and we get the quadratic as we wanted in the question. So this was a show that question. All we needed to do was show all the um, working out steps uh, that get, got us to x squared plus 3x minus 70. And that is question A complete. Now, uh, question B, we're going to have to solve uh, the equation to find the value of x. We start by factorising the quadratic, x plus 10 times x minus 7. And then we remember that we make each bracket equal to 0. So x plus 10 is equal to 0, that gives us x equals minus 10. x minus 7 is equal to 0, therefore x must be 7. And those are the two possible values of x. Now we have to think about which one works. So if x is minus 1, 
uh, minus 10. The top of the uh, trapezium would be minus 10, minus 1, which is minus 11. And so you would have a length of minus 11 centimetres. And that doesn't make any sense because you can't have a negative length. Whereas if we chose x is 7, we get the top of the trapezium is 7 minus 1, which is 6, and the other lengths make sense as well. And so we choose a sensible answer for x, the one that makes sense in the context of the question. Normally that is the positive value of x. Okay? That is question 2 complete, and we know that x is equal to 7. For example 3, look at the rectangle triangle. And we have to show that x squared minus 10x plus 9 is equal to 0. And then we're going to find the perimeter of the triangle. Okay, so uh, for this, because we know all three lengths of a right angle triangle, it's a good idea to use Pythagoras theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Where um, I've labelled the a, the b and the c in colours here. And we're going to substitute the numbers in. So a is x plus 3, b is x minus 4, and c is x plus 4. We can expand those brackets like this, and we'll get uh, this equation here. And we're going to have to simplify this step by step. We'll start by subtracting x squared off both sides, and those x squares will disappear. Then we're going to subtract 16 from both sides, those 16s will disappear. And then we're going to combine the x's, 6x minus 8x is minus 2x. And then finally, we can take 8x of both sides, which will give us x squared minus 10x plus 9 is equal to 0. Now, when you're doing this in the exam, you need to show all those algebraic steps, all, including the ones that I um, missed off the screen right now because I've run out of space. But in the exam, you will have plenty of space and you'll be able to write all those steps we just did those algebraic steps to get to x squared minus 10x plus 9 is equal to 0. Now it says find the perimeter of the triangle, so we're going to use a quadratic to find out what x is. We factorise and then we make each bracket equal to 0. That gives us either x equals 9 or x equals 1. So we choose a sensible answer. If we use 1, then we get one side as 1 minus 4 which is minus 3, and that makes no sense. We cannot have a negative length. So we choose uh, x equals 9, which gives us positive lengths. We get 9 minus 4 is 5, uh, 9 plus 4 is 13, and 9 plus 3 is 12. Those are the lengths of the triangle using x equals 9. And we add them all together to find the perimeter, and we get 5 plus 12 plus 13, that is equal to 30 centimetres, and that is the final answer. We have found the perimeter of the triangle. Okay, uh, if you need to rewatch parts of that video, please just rewind and rewatch example one, two, or three until you understand each step. But if you're ready, you can try these practice questions here. These practice questions will probably take uh, five minutes for question one, two, three, and four, and then the uh, question on the right hand side will probably take you another five minutes as well. So pause the video for 10 minutes and try to complete all these practice questions yourself. Okay, I'll reveal the answers in 3, 2, 1. Did you get it correct? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this week's video from Advanced Maths. Remember we have plenty more videos coming out every week. So remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos that will help you with your GCSE exams. We cover GCSE, A-level and IB maths, uh, so subscribe for all those videos. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.